Yeah, try that out. That'll work. Good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club meeting for Thursday, January 26th. My name is John Milliker and I'm the club president for the 2022-2023 season. The Arundel Camera Club was founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. For more information about us, please visit www.arundelcameraclub.org. I should have that memorized by now, shouldn't I? We are so happy that, you're, uh, that we're now meeting in person and still online. If you're local to Anne Arundel County, Maryland, we encourage you to visit us and, uh, and join us at the Saverna Park Baptist Church located at 506 Benfield Road, Saverna Park, Maryland. Uh, before we move on, do we have any announcements from any officers? No, no, no? Okay. Uh, I want to uh, have a couple things myself. I want to encourage people to check out the January newsletter where uh, our illustrious newsletter editor had an interview of him, finally, after he's interviewed a lot of other club members. I encourage you to, to read that article, and then I encourage you to pay attention, like the third question down, where Mike needs your content. Everybody here has something that they can give to the newsletter. Maybe you figured out a new way to edit a photo. Maybe you found a new piece of software. Maybe you write something to send over to Mike and fill our newsletter up, make his job a lot easier. I also want to recommend, I also want to remind people that this Sunday we have the fellowship right here in this room starting at 12 o'clock. If you would like to worship at the church, that starts at 1045. I have a few people that have offered to bring in stuff and pay for, to pay for some of the food to come in. What we're doing, we're, we're, to have a fellowship, we're expected to bring finger foods and snacks for between 50 and 60 people. I would really like to have some club members come in, maybe bring two of your, uh, your winning competition images. If you'd like to bring something, bake something, bring something to help feed people, that'd be great. Or if not, just come on in and just be here because we will get a chance to talk about the club to all the, the, the members and guests of the church. And we may be able to pick a couple members up from there. I know there's about five or six people in there that are fancy themselves photographers, so I think that'll work out good. Please email me tomorrow if you'd like to participate and if you could bring something in. Uh, we've got uh, currently deviled eggs. Christy and I are going to make a meat and cheese tray. We're bringing in um, sodas and, and water. Unlimited. Maybe brownies. Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. But if anybody could uh, would like to bring in some kind of finger foods to help us out, that'd be really great. Right now, we may just have to order some maybe pizzas. I don't know. I'd love to get a cake or some cupcakes or maybe brownies is good enough. Uh, but please email me tomorrow because I need to find I need to finalize everything for Sunday. I want to make sure we. Uh, we do what's required of us. That way, we can uh, we can not only thank the church for having us, thank the members and the guests for having us, but also, uh, like I said, kind of present on the club, have some members here to answer questions, and try to try to dangle that carrot and bring some people down here. Uh, moving on, let's uh, talk to Christine, our programs chair, and she's going to talk about the upcoming uh, goodies we have. Here you go, Christine. Good evening. Uh, just a reminder again, on this Sunday, January 29th, come out and promote our club to the fellowship here at the church. On February 2nd, we have our very own John Milliker. We have our very own John Milliker um, giving a presentation on aerial photography. On February 9th is our uh, digital contest with a the theme of glass. Remember that our second weeks are still virtual, so please don't come to the church. On February 11th is our field trip to St. Michael's. And then on February 16th, we have a presenter, Lori Lankford, who is giving a talk on looks like a painting. Um, you'll want to tune into that one because that'll help you with the contest in a couple months after that. Um, and then on February 23rd is our print contest with a the theme also of glass. Ron, are you ready to? We'll be running about an hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
give us a couple I, minutes. I want to add. Uh, I want to add one more thing for that February. What was that? February sixteenth. I was just. Uh, con I was just talked to um, one of the church members as we were setting up. They will be waxing and strip stripping and waxing the floors. We may be meeting upstairs in either the meeting room or the sanctuary, but they will have a place for us. We're just not sure where where we're going to be yet. So we'll make sure we get that information out in plenty of time. Christine ran back to her seat. Now I have to tap dance and wait for, wait for our contest here. Do we have numbers? Do we have uh, counts yet on how many people we have? <laughs> I see a ton. I see a ton of unlimited. Man, a good, good showing of novices as well. Uh, with today's, uh, with tonight's direct stream link, I reminded people that uh, you know please visit us out. And also, it's the second half of the year. If you haven't joined us yet, and you want to try to see what uh, what's going on with the competitions, memberships are half off, and you get to uh, you get to see what this is all about. There we go. There we go. All right. Nobody touch anything. Come on around here, Ron. All right. Let you introduce the judge for tonight. All right. Appreciate your patience this evening. We uh, are really happy to have uh, an abundance of participation, so that uh, means that we had a little bit harder work to do this morning, this afternoon, so that's okay. A um, couple things. Um, I did mention now before this, just uh, MPA news, uh, we have a black and white contest. I sent something out on it. There'll be more details on that very, very soon. So. Uh, first two entries are free, and uh, second two entries are, was it five or ten dollars? Yeah. Something like that. So I think it's a great opportunity, and uh, it, there are no prizes in terms of uh, anything fancy other than the bragging rights. So, but we think it's a good thing to keep everybody sharp, and we've got a really good judge lined up for that. So more, more on that later. So before we uh, get started here, I guess I should introduce our judge for this evening. And um, through the uh, MPA work with uh, judges and so on, uh, I had the privilege of getting to know Pete Morton. And uh, Pete is with us this evening. He's very kind to drive all the way over from the other part of the state to come and uh, be with us this evening. Feels like it. Feels like it. <laughs> yeah, he had ran a lot of traffic at this hour. Uh, a little bit of background about him. In 2001, he became an avid Photoshop user and quickly replaced his darkroom with newfound software. Uh, Pete's interest in Photoshop and digital photography never slowed. He accepted invitations to travel to England and lecture on digital photography at the college level in Cornwall, and again later to teach advanced Photoshop techniques to professional photographers in London. After retiring from the National Institutes of Health, Pete joined the Silver Spring Camera Club, where he's currently a director and a frequent presenter there. He's very knowledgeable about a, a wide variety of uh, topics, and uh, we're really uh, privileged to have him here this evening. He's also very active in the Photo Photographic Society of America, where he leads a photography study group and selects photographers for their monthly digital dialogue showcase. Pete has received numerous awards, both local and international, has been recognized by his own camera club as the photographer of the year. His work was, has hung at the uh, Maryland State House. He is a certified uh, photography judge in the state of Maryland for organization. So Pete, now I hit the highlights. Is there anything you would like to add to that? There's something I'd like to say. Um, I've, I've judged at a number of, of camera clubs, both in Maryland and elsewhere, and I have never found a person as helpful making it happen as Ron has been. He's really extraordinary. So thank you, Ron. Well, thank you. I did my job right for a change, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bob, we'll talk about that later. OK, I guess, uh, Bob, are you ready? And uh, Fred? Do you need some water? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. We have water, we have uh, coffee over here, and, 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 and cookies if you get the Low in sugar. Okay, let's see. Uh, Bob, uh, am I correct? By your count, we have. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, color novice. Is that correct? Color novice. Okay, and um, 
What, uh, what, uh, how many entries do we have in novice? What, I, mean, I have 14 okay. novice. Uh, has that changed? No, no. Okay. And if we get to the end of the 14, when the first pass through, uh, we'll, we'll change the, uh, the numbers. But right now, if it's one through four, and plus uh, one uh, honorable mention, would right. that uh, match your count? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So it's the usual deal. We'll just go through one at a time, and uh, Bob will read the title, and you can hang on to that if there's something. Great. Right. Okay. Novice color, Thunderbirds. Golden Age. Young Swan Couple. The Starting Line. Old and new. Inside the locomotive. Winter finch perched in snow. Moonrise at sunset. Cowboy wall art. E and O four five zero zero. Eagle Square Mill Building. Introspection. Naked Pink Lady Lily. Flower dancing in rain. Here we are. Okay, we'll run through for critique. Okay, does our number still hold, uh, Bob? I think so, yeah. yeah I was <laughs> counting. Good. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. short one right there. Okay. okay. On the so bottom? One through four and okay. one honorable. One honorable, yeah, yes. Okay. Right, 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 right. right. down to his reasonable number we'll spread them out on the table okay mm. very nice shot I think the the fact that the the four jets are overlapping really adds a lot of interest to this I think uh, I might like to see it as an matted as a as a panoramic uh, because it certainly is a panoramic, um, and perhaps a little more space in front of the lead jet, but nicely done. But but I think we'll take that one out. I like this a lot, and the the colors and how the the sky, the cloud reflects the colors of the building on the left is really beautiful. The reflections are subtle, but definitely there. And it almost looks like it might be a long exposure, but it's, it's a little hard to tell. 
Very nice. Let's keep that in. Nice. The fact that the the two birds are coming straight toward us and we get the the wonderful reflection in the water below them is is excellent. I think I would be tempted to even brighten the birds just a hair. They they almost look well dirty, um, and perhaps even slightly remove some of the haze or some of the saturation on the uh, on the lily pads that are around them. I think their their saturation and, and brightness uh, sort of pulls my eye away from the birds, but it's it's a gorgeous picture, and let's keep that one in. This looks like quite a race that was going on and reminds me of Annapolis, and I have very fond memories of that area. It's, it almost gives you a feeling of freedom when you look at it, or at least it does to me. I think the, the capture, the, uh, the settings on the camera, the shutter speed and the depth of field were, were very well chosen. It would be nice if there were a little bit of interest in the clouds, in the sky. Um, not so much that it would detract from the sailboats, but enough to make it a little more oh, exciting as you watch the, the race going. So let's take that one out. The juxtaposition of the, the young woman and, and what appears to be a very old library is well seen, very nicely noticed that this is well worth a picture. And I noticed that the, the cropping on this is absolutely perfect. The verticals also seem to be vertical and the woman who's the focus of the picture, in, in my opinion, is at a very good location. At first, I thought of cropping a little bit at the top to, to lower it, since that has less interest. But then we would lose the, the arc uh, of the entryway. And so I think you made exactly the right decision. Let's keep that in. Wow, excellent photography. The, the colors and the sharpness of this and, and the, the vignette that you applied really pulls my eye right into the, right into the image. And especially the, the white meter or face of the, the meter um, is the perfect focal point to, to start looking at and then let your eyes move out following the lines of the, of the pipes. Nicely done, um, and let's keep that one in. I'm beginning to see a problem about keeping them all in. <laughs> and nice shot of the bird. Um, I think the, when I, when I saw this at first, the, what I assume is snow on the, on the bottom left corner um, looked like clouds. Uh, just kind of a continuation of the clouds on the on the bottom right side, and that kind of bothered me because the the branch that the bird is is standing on seems to be almost floating, uh, which somehow didn't quite feel right. Uh, it's a nice shot, and and the bird is beautifully sharp, but let's take that one out. Quite a picture. I think uh, the the setting of this, the scene, is just a lovely scene. And I think capturing the the moon or or doing a composite with the moon was exactly the right choice. And the moon and the lighthouse are both positioned beautifully to give a, a really nice composition. And 
it would have been a little heavy on the the left and the top left sides, except for the white buoy on the on the bottom right. At first, I thought, you know, we should take that buoy out, but I think that it's really needed uh, for the composition of the image. So let's leave it in. And I love images that tell stories or imply stories, and this one certainly does. The, the boots especially are, are captivating. Their, their pattern adds a lot of interest. Uh, if it had been simply the guitar and the, and the cowboy hat, I, I don't think it would hold my interest for long at all. The only thing that I could possibly suggest on this would be the straw or hay at the at the bottom of the image could be just slightly darker, but I I don't think that that's necessary to to have an image that somebody should be hanging on their wall. So let's keep that in. So I've been to the the railroad museum in Baltimore a number of times and. This certainly reminds me of that, if this isn't that. Um, and I think the, the symmetry of this is, is nicely done. I do find that I soon lose interest in looking at it. Um, the, the front of the, the engine uh, is fairly bright, but doesn't seem to have a great deal of, of intrigue in my mind and my eyes keep going to the number the 4500 which I don't think is particularly valuable in the image so let's take this one out very intriguing and I can I can certainly see why you're struggling to determine which which way was up <laughs> but but this works. This works very nicely. The, uh, the window, or whatever that is, I'm assuming a window in the middle, um, with all of the different panes, or if it's not a window, all of the different images, um, is really attractive. And the, the colors all work extremely well together. I think the vignette that the photographer put on the, the photograph pulls my eyes directly into the, to the interesting portion of, of the photograph. I would consider cropping the, the very bottom part of the window at the, the top of the, of the frame. Um, I don't think that adds anything, but it's a little bit of a distraction. There's also a tiny white area at the very bottom that, that I would See about getting rid of, let's see if I can work this. Ah, right there. Um, it would be nice to, to eliminate that since it's so bright. Um, but it's, it's well seen and, and it's original, which I like a lot. Creativity means a great deal in photography these days. But with those two things, the, the window at the top and the the bright area at the bottom, I think we'll take this one out this time. And fascinating. I, I think the, I, it almost looks like it's a dogwood, I can't tell for sure, not being a flower person. Um, but I, that, just adds so much to the image. It would be nothing without that. So this was extremely creative. Um, I think the the color of the of the flowers just really grabs my attention. I do find that that there is so much going on with the the stained glass directly behind the the beautiful petals. Um, it makes me feel a little uneasy when I look at it, uh, and I, I almost wish that I could see just the, just the beautiful flowers themselves, 
or have the stained glass that's on the left side not be directly behind the, the branch. So let's take that one out. Pictures of, of flowers are really hard to come across as spectacular. But this one made the trip. It's, uh, there are so many flower pictures that you have to be really very creative and, and have quite an imagination to get something that stands out from the rest. I think the, uh, the brilliant yellow in the center and the brightness of it, and then the, the browns as they're, as they're reaching out uh, against the, the purple petals are nicely offset by the background, which has been darkened and, and perhaps the saturation has been lowered and perhaps even a bit out of focus. I think this is very nicely done. Let's keep it in. And a, a nice flower picture. Um, this one is I, I think technically quite well done. I think the sharpness and the uh, the position of the flowers is is excellent. I find that the bottom um, doesn't doesn't have anything in it that that adds to the image. And as I mentioned with the previous image, to to really stand out with a, a flower picture. It has to really stand out. So th this, I think, was, was well seen, but I think we'll take this one out. We have seven, and then you need to whittle it down to five. And we need five, okay. So. And do I have to remember what they look like, or will you turn them over? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can lay them out if you'd like to do it that way. I'll take this off. All right. It's 14, it's, yeah, two have to go. Check one. <laughs> okay, how shall we start? Either end? Or? Either end, it's up to you. Okay. So let's do for honorable mentions. Um, mm -hmm. Do the lighthouse as beautiful as it was. Mm -hmm. And let's go with this one as an honorable. Okay. You just have one honorable. Yeah, one honorable. Oh, one honorable. Yeah, one yeah, okay. All right. So you have to um, I'm sorry, Lighthouse, but we'll have to go with this one. Okay. So that one is Regent. So this is Honorable Mention. Uh, that is a 
And let's have this one be fourth. And the cowboy paraphernalia third. And the lady second. And I don't think I've ever done this before, but I want to make the flower the first. And the, the birds are, are wonderful, but I ran out of options. Okay. I'm just going to borrow this so people... If yours placed, I'm going to bring you the mic and let you talk about it. So, open color, novice, honorable mention, golden age, Doug Wood. <laughs> He's not with us. So. Doug, if you can share some information on that, we'll talk about it for you. Um, fourth place. Inside the locomotive, Anthony Cusada. Thank you. I, I took that shot at the B&O Railroad Museum at our outing. Uh, Bearded Bob informed me that there was a repair shop that we were allowed to go into, and it was 15 minutes before they closed. So we were rushing, and I was rushing that shot, but I enjoyed taking it and enjoyed the whole um, day up there. Very nice. Thank you. Third place, Cowboy Wall Art, J.C. Williams. Yeah, that was taken on site at Kinder Farm Park out there with the goats. If you go. You might have been to Kinder Farm Park, you know, you go all the way down there is an old barn down there with a lot of two wagons down there with some hay and so I took my guitar out there and, and my boots and my hat and and decided to sit it up. I wanted the hay and decided to fit inside to photograph it. Awesome. Great job. He's gonna play at the end. <laughs> Second place, Doug Wood, old and new. All I can tell you is I know that both of these were taken in Europe. Doug is currently, to the jealousy of most of us, photographing in Iceland winter right now. So I don't know when he'll see this, but he'll share when he gets, gets a chance. Okay. Uh, first place, Naked Pink Lady Lily, Diane Vatcher. Hi, I want to thank the judge. I've never had someone say spectacular about an image. Um, this was a found lily in my yard on my, just a surprise. So I had it in a digital file and I decided to work on it. What was the lighting? The lighting, um, I, had, I had an, uh, you know, everything. I, all my photographs are all natural. Um, yeah, so it was just downlit. I just reversed the, it was actually side, so I took it photographed on the side. And yep, that's how I photographed it. And then it, it didn't work that way, so 
I had to flip it. A judge has never said spectacular because they haven't seen the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're going to sign that one for me. <laughs> you can just speak up a little bit. People in the room can't hear you. There's oh, not sure. A speaker sure. system in the room. You come on, oh boy. I have um, mm -hmm. one through thirty-nine, four. Uh, thirty-nine. So one through four, four on the right, right, right. Four, right. I'll put them in the. Okay. Unlimited color. Um, 39. So it'll be one through fourth and four honorables. Right. Ocean Delight. Alpha and Omega. Looking Westward. Can't see the forest for the tree. Mother and hungry baby bird. Basilica. Mary Cow and Car. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Around the House. Mute Swan Liftoff. Bird in Moonlight. <laughs> Downstream from Lube. Could you say the title of that one again? Downstream from Lube, oh. L-U-B-E. Got it. The Attic. Williamsburg Book Binding. Sunbathing. Baby curls. Shy egret. Just flying around. No diving. <laughs> On a swivel. One 
monumental sunset. Train wheel. Vegas lights. Love Bridge. Deadwood. Ice Pearls at McKeldin. Ice Pearls at McKeldin. Sedona Reflection. Too busy to slow down. Ariel's necklace. <coughs> Apples. Fell. Three six four B Havana Harbor Speed Rocket. Park All wound up Concentration Egret Sunset Flight Vent There we are Zoom around Flip them. Right. Yep. All right. Mm. All right. Okay. And we're still for one through four and four honorable mentions. This is quite a scene. I I especially like the the fact that the photographer included these flowers down at the bottom that that actually gave some some strength to the foreground which which it was very beneficial to the overall image you can almost feel the waves as they're coming in and the the clouds in the sky are a very nice balance to it let's keep this one in
this is just a technical masterpiece. Um, the the detail, the the focus, the depth of field, the color, everything is is perfect. It it doesn't grab me as creative or imaginative, so I, I'm not sure that I would want to look at this for a long time. Um, it's very well done, but I think we'll take it out. Another of the coastline images, and let me... The, the people in, in this are a little too small to actually grab my attention. And unfortunately, there's a, a bit of a halo around the front of the cliff that uh, looks like it probably came from some post-processing. It was well seen to, and to see the flow of the white as it goes up and leads toward the people. Um, I think we'll take this out and next time ask the people to get bigger. <laughs> And this was well captured. I mean, it, it really tells quite a story. The, uh, the fact that the, the mother bird is so sharp in the image is, is excellent. And I, I think that just seeing the open beak of the baby tells, tells the whole story very nicely. I would like to see the shadow uh, not cut off by the edge of the, the frame and also this shadow. They kind of lead my eye out and I keep looking for the rest of that, of that shadow. It's nicely done, but I think we'll take that one out. The joys of a wide angle lens. I, you get some really spectacular images and the, the crispness of this and again the depth of field that you get with, with a lens of that type makes this quite quite compelling. I think that the, the shape of the branch that's in the foreground um, really is what makes the, the image. Let's, let's keep that in. And this is a very well done image. Um, it, it doesn't tell a story to me though. It, it, it looks like an outstanding documentary of, of the building. That uh, the angle is interesting in that we're looking down at it, but it's not a dramatic looking down or up. So it's, it's nicely done, but I think we'll take it out. I keep trying to see the expression on the man's face. Um, I know what my expression would be. Uh, and it's, it's quite a captivating image. I think the, the cropping on this is excellent. And the fact that we've got what appears to be the, the bull or whatever the animal is, um, staring at the man and the man staring back gives a, a real strong feeling of tension that that really makes the image. So let's let's leave this one in. And I think we're back to the BNO Railroad Museum. And I, I like the the feeling, the circular feeling of the flags that's echoed by the circular feeling of the, of the trains on the bottom. It, it's an interesting picture, but it, it doesn't hold my attention long. Um, so I think it's well done, but let's take that one out. This is really well captured. I've, I've done a lot of bird photography, and I know how difficult it is to get something like this. 
to me, the, the parts of this that really stand out are the, the tips of the wings hitting the water and the little splashes of water behind the wing and the, the hint of a reflection that's down below. Beautifully cropped, there's a little more room in front of the bird than there is behind it, and that's as it should be. Let's keep this in. The reflections in, in these images are, are really great. Um, this one, it, to me, I'm not sure quite what to, to focus on. I, I see the bird, but the bird is, is so small in the image that it doesn't really compete with the, the bright, I assume it's a, a moon or sun, and the, and the reflection. I do like the, the color of the edge of the, the land. Um, and the fact that the horizon is almost dead center doesn't bother me in the least in this. I think that, that that's one of those rules that's often best overlooked. But I, I would like to have something definite to focus on, and the bird doesn't quite, quite reach that level. I also notice a good bit of noise in the sky. Um, so let's take this one out. Captivating images. It's, you get such marvelous color with, with oils on water and, and leaves, um, and this captures it quite well. I think the, the fact that this leaf or whatever this is is almost pointing to the, to the beautiful colors in, in this area uh, adds to it a lot. And we have other leading lines that are pointing in that direction, all of them pulling my eyes right toward the, the bright, colorful area. Nicely done. Let's leave that in. This is, has one of those feelings when I look at it that's like, yeah, I think I must have been there, even though I know I haven't. It's, uh, it's like you would expect and want an old attic to be. Um, I think that it's intriguing and, and to see the ladder and the opening at the top so that you begin wondering what all is, is above it is it's very nicely seen. I, th I find the brightness of this area a little bit overwhelming. It, it's not really, uh, it doesn't really fit with the feel of the rest of the, of the image. Um, it's nicely seen and, and it's one that I, th I think could be worked with to, to darken the, the highlights or even crop them out a bit. Um, so let's take that one out. I was amazed when I heard that this was a book binding. Um, I loved going to photograph at the National Cathedral, and I could believe that this was one of the stained glass windows that I don't remember seeing. Um, nicely done, nicely captured, and beautifully positioned in the photograph. And the fact that everything outside of the center of interest is out of focus is excellent in this. That that really captures your your eye, your vision, and it pulls it to the bright area of, of the image. So let's keep that in. <laughs> it's well captured. Um, turtles are amazing creatures. The I love the the red on the neck of the turtle and how it's reflected as red also in the, in the water. Um, it's, it's well done and it was a fortunate thing to, to see, but it, it doesn't, doesn't really hold my attention for a long time. It's, it would be great if the turtle were, were actually doing something, if, if turtles ever actually do something. 
Um, so let's let's take that out. <laughs> and <laughs> when I saw this, the first thing I thought of was it's a, a picture of somebody else's art, and it's just such a gorgeous child. Uh, I I don't know if it's a little boy or a little girl, but I, the idea of of having the eye right behind the the curl I thought was wonderful. I would be tempted to darken this area on the top left uh, because I want I want the the viewer to go immediately to those two eyes, which are grab kind of grab you when you when you look at them, and the the brightness of the background is is trying to pull me away, but not quite successfully. Let's keep this in. Ah, yes. And this is, bird photography is both difficult and amazing when you get it right. And the curve of the neck of the bird and the, the fact that the color that grabs your attention is the beak pointed straight down is nice. It would be, it would be good to have a little more room on the right I find that the, the head and the eye are, to me, feeling a little cramped by the, by the edge of the frame. So let's take this one out. And hummingbirds are a, a real challenge and, and exciting to take images of and to, to see to decide should you try to stop their their wing motion or do you want it to blur or what and i think the shutter speed on this one was well chosen i like the separation of the hummingbird from the background the the brightness and the sharpness of of the bird let it really stand out i'm i i would like to see the bird doing something other than flying um, uh, but it's a very nicely done image, so let's let's keep that one in. And photographers with a sense of humor are wonderful, and this this photographer obviously has one with the no diving sign. I think that the uh, the idea of the image is really excellent. I do, I, I'm not sure that the horizon is perfectly straight. It almost looks as though it's tilted down a little bit to the right, which, which would be a problem. Um, I like the lighting on the bird, and particularly on the, the back of the bird's neck. It, it makes a, a very pleasing shape. But let's take this one out. And the photographer did a very nice job with the, the printing of this and the, the post-processing to retain detail in, in the dark feathers and not blow out the highlights in the, in the bird's head. I think that's quite nice. I find that there's a little more at the, the bottom than, than I find appealing, although I can see why you would do it. It gives a sort of a sense of height to the bird, like you're, you're looking up at it, which is what you should do with a bird. Um, I also think that it would be good to have a little more room on the right side so that it's not quite so close to the tail feathers. So let's take this one out. This is really nicely done. The, the lighting at the bottom um, gives great balance because 
people in general, their attention immediately goes to, to humans in, a, in an image, and as well as animals. And so the, the person, the rider on the horse and the horse itself do a nice job of balancing the extremely bright sunset uh, and colorful sunset. And I, li I like the subtle colors in the sky behind the, the monument. When, when one is taking a, a, a photograph of something like a monument, it's, it's the old uh, taking a picture of someone else's art, and so you have to add something to it that's your own. And this photographer did that quite nicely. Let's leave that in. The colors in this and the position of the wheel right at the bottom of the frame are, are quite appealing. And I especially like what, if it were a car, I'd call a hubcap, not a hubcap, a, a fender that's circling over the, over the wheel. Um, it, it doesn't say a great deal to me, although it's a very nicely done image. Um, I like the colors, I like the shapes, but, but I think we need to take this one out. <laughs> There's something about having McDonald's in there. It, <laughs> it, it adds some reality to, to the picture. Um, I like the, all of the colors and the, the sharpness of the lights. It, it almost looks like it could be a composite, uh, but, but I don't believe it is. Um, it's an interesting photograph, but I, I can't say that it says much to me other than here are a lot of really bright signs. Um, so let's, let's take that one out. And reflections, so nice. Um, I find this one quite appealing. I think that having the the foliage in the bottom right uh, gives it some depth, and it's it's as though it has three or four layers with the the foliage here, and then the bridge, and then the trees behind it, and finally the sky beyond that. And that's, that's a very pleasant feeling of, of depth and reality. It kind of draws you into the image. The exposure, uh, whether it was done in camera or post-processing, was extremely well done. Keeping the bridge at, at just the right brightness, I believe. Let's keep that in. And the branch. Um, an interesting image. I like silhouettes of trees and branches because of all the lines and the textures. And it's nice to see the water underneath the branch. Um, I'd like to see a bit more of it. And I think this one would have been helped a great deal if the, if the sky uh, had a bit more color to it. The, there seems to be color down in the, the water at the bottom. And it would be nice to have that balanced by some similar color in the sky. So let's take this one out. This one's intriguing. When I first saw it, I was immediately thought of a multi-legged multi buffalo for some odd reason. Uh, but it was, it was well captured and well seen. I think that the uh, the figure of the ice with its dripping down uh, really makes the image quite interesting. Let's keep that in. Uh, 
And this is a beautiful area. Um, I, I love the, the fact that you got the reflections and, and this tree to me is, is perfect. That really helps set everything off. I, th I think that it would be, if there's more to the, to the image that you captured above, it would be nice to have a little more sky so that the, the peak of the rock isn't right against the frame, either at the top or at the bottom. Um, it's a beautiful location and a, a nicely done, but I think we'll take this one out. And long exposure at night just has a, a huge amount of intrigue. And the tail light of the, the vehicle that's going in is a very nice line leading leading the eyes down the street into the into the photograph. It is an image that you could look at and see more and more the longer you looked, and that's that's appealing. It it doesn't grab me as unusual. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of taillight streaks and nighttime photography, and this is a good one, but it, it doesn't stand out as, what did we say, spectacular. So, so let's take that one out. And I, I like the, the panoramic feeling of this and the fact that it almost looks like it's the beginning of a necklace of shells. The lighting on the shells is nicely done. They, they aren't blown out. And the dark shell on the left uh, has detail in it. it. It's a nice image, but it doesn't say a great deal to me. It's not one that I think I could look at for for a long period of time and, and have it retain my interest. So let's take that one out. This is a gorgeous still life. I think that the photographer did a, an amazing job with the lighting in the background and the choice of color of that lighting. The, the four apples are nicely positioned and the, the wooden mortar and pestle give, give the image a, a nice balance and, and feels like we have a, a perfect composition. I think the legs, the wooden bowl and the legs that are uh, over with the apple um, are, are tremendous. They really help make the picture fascinating. Let's keep that in. This is a very nicely done image of, of the maple leaf. Um, I like the fact that we can see all of the veins and the, the small patterns, that it's not a, a perfect leaf because leaves, 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 these things are not perfect. Um, it's nicely done, but it, it's almost something that you would want to see in a in a book of beautiful paintings of leaves. Um, and it, it doesn't hold my attention. It, it's more like a, an extremely well done documentary of, of the leaf. So let's take that one out. Doorways and windows are always fascinating. And I, I liked the fact that the, the photographer left the, I can't, Looks like 364B um, as the name of the image, um, because anytime there's writing or or numbers, um, it becomes a, an attractant for the viewer. The colors in this are are nicely done. I think a, a bit more contrast and perhaps even a, a little bit more saturation in the the greens. Would, would be beneficial, but it's a nicely seen and nicely done image. Let's keep it in.
And this one is beautifully taken. The, the four boats um, are just perfectly positioned in the image. And the, the fact that the, the near boat is so much larger than the, the fourth boat on the, the left gives real perspective and pulls your eyes back to the, to the building in the background. And then when I saw that, I started noticing the, the beautiful clouds. Uh, and they're, they're extremely attractive. I think that the photographer did an extremely nice job on this. Let's keep this in. Hood ornaments. And this one is almost an abstract, and it's a beautiful one. I think the the handling of the color and the handling of the the sharpness uh, and all of the various lines in this make this an intriguing image. So let's keep this in. And this is another one that that almost feels like an abstract, or perhaps it is. Um, the, the dark lines of the branches make this uh, uh, quite an interesting image. And the, the various, the mottled bark or whatever it is on the, the orange and, and kind of yellow, uh, possibly bark, uh, gives gives a nice texture that's almost a background to the dark to the dark branches. Nicely done. Let's keep that in. And I like this a lot. Whoever saw this or set it up or took it really had a good eye for finding an appealing image. It it really tells a story which which to me is, is important. The, the saturation on this bothers me a bit. It it's, feels a bit oversaturated. The, the pinks or rows of the wheels and the, the greens in the, the background of the sunflower and the, the other foliage seems like it's almost uh, overly done. It's, it's got a huge amount of potential, but I, I think we'll take it out. So my, my daughter juggles, and I've seen this expression. And every time I see her juggling, I, I tell her, Jennifer, close your mouth because jugglers always seem to have their mouth open. Um, but it's, it's a good moment in time. The, the shutter speed was well chosen, as well as the f-stop, so that both the, the pen and the, and the man are in focus. I do find that the man's side of his face is, is a bit over bright, and I really wish that the, the pen weren't covering a significant part of his face. The other thing that I would like to, to have slightly different would be I'd like to see this complete hand instead of having it cut off by the frame. So let's take this one out. Another spectacular bird image. This one, the, the lighting of the bird is really wonderful. I think that the, the cropping of this with all of the room in front of the bird and, and even room below the wings was extremely nicely done. The texture of the bird and the background in this really sets it all off without making it feel garish of any type. So the, nicely handled, and let's keep that in. And old peeling paints and rusts have such fascinating textures and colors. The, this, this is clearly 
one of those. I think the the yellow at the top was well chosen. If the yellow had been at the bottom, I think it would have felt unbalanced. Um, it's it's nicely done, and I, I find a lot of it appealing, but it, it would not hold my attention for great lengths of time. So let's take that one out. So we have one through four, and then 50 honorable mentions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one through four, and then four more. So it um, looks like quite a stack there. Do you want yes. to run them through again and uh, select our? Yeah, I think I think we, if you could, okay. um, and just pass them straight through. Okay, in. Out, in, in, out, in, out. Um, in for now. In. Out. Oh, sadly, out. In. Out. In. Out. Out. And in. So what have we gotten it down to? Uh, it looks like we're pretty close. Okay. Stand up and take a break. No. <laughs> it's going to be a long evening yet. So you have nine, so you need to just eliminate one. Then just get rid of one? And then four on the boys. Right. Okay. Our official written rules are 16 by 20. So, did we just eliminate one of them? Yes. That was so much. Let me wait until I finish here, though. What movie was that? Naked Gun? Yeah. Pretty interesting. Okay. Let me come around here and I'll get Right. 
And we'll make this one an honorable. And one more. I don't know. I don't know have one more honorable. Yep. Uh, okay. um, Let's go with this bird. Me either. Me either. I know. My son is all into it. He watches it with me. He goes to those things. He's looking for it. I think he's going to get into photography. I agree with him. He's got a background. This will be fourth. And you know where I want to go? He doesn't change my own graffiti alley. I do. And second. I like four by five. I really like small But then so I'll do eleven by fourteen. Hmm? I know that's what I found out. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Honorable mention, all the friends. Love Bridge, Edna Hankey. Do you want to tell about your friend? <laughs> That's my love bridge. I love going there in Central Park every every year. I love going there. And um, I like the detail of the bridge, and you can see everything so clear. I love that. The Love Bridge. Their exposure was perfect. Yeah. William Bur Williamsburg Book Finding. Uh, Christine Millica. Honorable mention. This is in the binding shop in Williamsburg. Um, and I just love the detail of the center, and I love macros, so I had yeah. to get a close up shot of it, and I love the way. It was out of focus on the edges. Exactly. Monumental sunset, honorable mention, Christine Milliker. <laughs> this is in Williamsburg. It's one of the statues that are sitting, and we were there at sunset. And I just love the way that it stood out against the night sky and the sunset. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> yeah. Mute Swan lift off. Honorable mention, Mike Thomas. I took that at uh, Cape May at the little nature walk and ponds they have on the on the dune side of, of Cape May, and there's just tons of swans and ducks and. And that's, you know, 25 frames a second to get the right one. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Mm -hmm. Fourth place, Ron Pfeiffer, Speed Rocket. Uh, this was a hood ornament on a car, an old 
car show in Glen Burnie back in the spring after I got my F2 lens, and it uh, seemed like a good opportunity to try the blur. Yeah. Third place, Eagle Sunset Flight by Thomas. Um, I took that down in Florida, Robinson's Preserve at, at sunset. I just like the way, you know, it's flying straight at the, at the sunset and the lighting uh, really highlighted it. And it was different than most eagles. Uh, flipping it horizontally? Yes, but that's not the way he was flying, so I didn't. But I know most people, <laughs> Americans, look at things left or right. Yeah. yeah. But it's very nicely done. The lighting is gorgeous. Second place, Apples, Mike Thomas. I took that at our tabletop night with Fred helping me with the lighting. Very nice. Were the props yours? Yes. Uh -huh. First place, Havana Harbor, Greg Hockle. And he is not with us tonight. Online, Greg says, got lucky with the lighting and the, a boat making a nice wake. <laughs> and just a uh, FYI, Mike got a try, got all three of his in place, so he'll get, if he wants the ribbon. <laughs> of course he does. I wouldn't want the ribbon. <laughs> Something like that. 14, yeah. 14, so that'll be one through four in one honorable mention. Yep. Okay, so this is. And the first time you can pass them through a little faster. Okay. <laughs> um, monochrome prints, novices. What heck is that? No, you just have to fold it back on itself. Gerber Daisy. Yeah, there you go. Ginkgo meets maple. BB55. Brooklyn doorknobs. Foggy day at the bridge. Hunkering down in the snowstorm. Gothic light. No sailing today. Javon. For me? Fireworks. Waterfall. I think you oh, the wrong right. We got two together. This is waterfall. <laughs> View from El Chatton.
frog canoe. A very nicely done daisy. I think that the, the fact that there's a little bit of detail in the background is actually quite appealing. I think against just a stark black, it would have been missing something. Let's leave that in. I, I like the idea of this, and, and I think that it, it definitely should be monochrome as it is. I think that the lighting, particularly up in this area, keeps pulling my, my eye away from the, the floating leaf. I like the fact that the leaf is floating and we can see the, the displacement of the, the water, of the surface tension. But let's take that one out. The sharpness of this and the the different tones are well handled. The the flags are not blown out, even though they're they're white, and the the dark areas have have a bit of detail, which is great. I don't find a great deal that would hold my interest in this for long, though. So let's take this out. And the idea of this is, is really excellent. I would really like to see the rest of this shadow on, of, that, of that doorknob. Um, the, the handling of the graduation of the light from the dark on the left to the bright is, is quite nice. It's, it almost feels unbalanced because there's so much bright on the right and so little on the left. So let's take that one out. I like this a lot. I think that the the fog or the mist um, really gives it perspective. It, it pulls your eye along along the bridge all the way back until it disappears. And the rocks in the foreground on the bottom right are perfectly positioned to, to give you even more of a feeling of depth. Let's leave that in. Well, it must have been some place to have found this. That's that's rather amazing. I think the uh, what appears to be ice or snow-covered um, branches of some type in in front of the animal, which almost looks like a a moose, um, are very interesting. I I wish I could see the eyes of the animal. I think that it, it bothers me a bit that they're obscured. Uh, let's take that one out. This one is nicely cropped and, and well seen. I think the, the fact that you included the, the statue within the frame and left enough room a little tight, but not bad, uh, since it's a small statue at the top was good. The steps kind of pull me into the, into the image, so I like that a lot. So let's keep that. The, the, the clouds above the mast of the sailboat um, are really what, what makes this an interesting image to me. I, I'd like to see a little more detail in the rest of the sky, though, perhaps to, to be able to bring out, oh, a little differentiation between the bright and the dark areas. Let's take that one out. Very nicely captured. The, the man's eyes looking directly at, at me as I'm looking at him, and his sunglasses uh, add a huge amount to the story. 
I like this a lot. Let's leave this in. I love the, the look on the man's face. It's, it's, I remember the title of this was For Me, but it's almost like he's saying, oh my God, I'm going to drop this, um, which is what I would have been saying. It's, it's an interesting, interesting photograph. I think that having the, the back of the woman's uh, body and, and head is a nice counterbalance to the, to the two men who are looking in that direction. Let's leave that in. And fireworks can be pretty challenging, and this one is nicely done. The, the fireworks themselves are surprisingly sharp, not, not streaked like, like many fireworks end up being. I'd be interested in, in the process done to, to capture this one. I like the smoke of the trail as the fireworks were being shot off into the air. Um, I don't know that it's, it's going to be a picture that, that I would want to look at for a long time. And I would like very much to see the rest of this firework, since it's fairly prominent, and the, the rest of the one on the bottom right. Um, so let's take that one out. And the infamous waterfall. Um, the perspective on that is nice, and the, the, the fact that it doesn't look like it's a long exposure uh, is interesting. So many, so many of the waterfall images are totally silky, which is appealing in its own way, but, but it's a little refreshing in some ways to see this one. I like the fact that the, the end of the dam is still within the frame of the, the image, and it doesn't appear that the, the white water is blown out. It looks like there's a, a bit of detail left in there, so let's leave this one in. And this is another spectacular scene. I, I love the layers, again, of this one with the, the three levels of mountain pulling you back in with the, the cloud kind of obscuring the, the peak of that single mountain in the center. The, the area in the bottom, it would be really good to get a little more detail, a little more light in that area, perhaps to just brighten the shadows a bit. It's, it's really good to have a strong foreground um, in order to, to give an anchor to an image. And to do that, you would need to have some, something that you would actually look at. And this, this feels like it has just a little bit too much darkness. So let's, uh, let's leave that one in, though. Interesting. I think the the photograph is is nicely taken with the sharpness and the the tones, um, everything from the the whites that we need all the way to the to the darkest areas, covers the spectrum of of tonal uh, in in a monochrome. So that's nice. It doesn't really say a great deal to me though. Um, I, I don't think it would hold interest for very long. So let's take that one out. Yeah, so we need to take out two. Four plus one. 
Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's take these two out. And this one is an honorable mention. This is a fourth. This one? Yes. Mm -hmm. The gentleman is a third. And the daisy is a second. Okay, honorable mention, novice, monochrome, Debbie Wolf, The View from El Chapman. Hey, El Chapman's a little town that you go to just to see those mountains and to hike. And they, we couldn't see it the whole time we were there. And the last morning we were having breakfast and I made my family sit by the window because I was willing the clouds to go to move and they did for me. <laughs> Fourth place, Doug Wood, Gothic Light. Um, third place, Javon, J.C. Williams. Well, as you all probably know, that's a, you know, I can only do self-portraits because I don't have anyone else to do, so that's a self- <laughs> That's a self-portrait taken at uh, Patuxent Wildlife Refuge, uh, I think about, about a couple of years ago during COVID, having things else to do. So I go out to the wildlife place and set up my camera and take oh. pictures of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't recognize you because of the mask. <laughs> <laughs> no. of the real wildlife. Yeah. Um, this is Gerber Daisy, third, second place, Diane Vatcher. Um, thank you. It's, um, it's a backlit shot, um, multiple exposures, not focus stacked, but just exposures. And then I created my own background because it just yeah. needed something. They do that, they do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's near spectacular. <laughs> near. Near. Well, you can only, one is spectacular. <laughs> spectacular adjacent. <laughs> hey, yours were spectacular. Foggy day at the bridge, first place, J.C. Williams. That was taken, uh, was it this month or last month? You remember the day that we had all of the fog? It was a very fog, you could always see 10 feet in front of you. Well, I spent that whole day at the Naval Academy Bridge. As a matter of fact, I had one, a different one last doing the uh, digital one also, and I have many, many more. I spent the whole day out there doing that. Okay. Well done. It's beautiful. It's taken from Jonas Green's park. the park next to the river. Only six pictures together. How many do you have on there? Mm -hmm. 
回見直りますね。Okay, so that would be four on the board because we round up. Right. Okay.、Um, black and white unlimited. 35 images. First one is Kate. Preparing offerings. This is actually a monochrome, I mean, a, a novice. It's crept in. Anyway, Yosemite. Embraced by time. Reach for the sky. Windows, windows, and more windows. Hammer welding. Working the bay. Lady in the coffin. This is actually a novice. Window still life. The return. Stoic in the rain. Colonnade. Angels. No, angles. <laughs> Rock study. Woman with hoe. Gears. Heron, black and white. Bashful mule. Black hole. View from the attic. All locked up. Zupit Mountain Snow. This is another novice. Jellyfish. Wash day. Ceiling Dragon. Shay for smoke and steam. Ten speed butterfly. Engine B and O. We're engine at the B and O. Florida egret, pagoda, D 
DC metro. Down by two. Hat overboard. Veiled wolf montage. <coughs> right. Is Kathy still here? Yeah. Kathy, are you unlimited or are you novice in this in black and white? Uh, unlimited. Can we double check? I mean, we're okay, but I thought I saw that you had a novice on one of yours when, when Bob passed it through. Was that Kathy's photo? The three novices are Ed and Hanky. Oh, Ed and Hanky has all three? Yes. Ed, somehow you put your, your black and whites in unlimited. Would you like to compete in unlimited since we already went through the, the novice class? Yeah, you made it. Want to leave them in? Does anybody object to uh, have an Ed uh, compete with the with the big boys and girls? Nope. All right, go get them, Ed. <laughs> if she wins, she's out. <laughs> I love the emotion that this one gives you when you first look at it. I think the the lighting and and although it's it's clearly a staged position, it's very nicely done. Um, I think the the fingers and the the arms pointing up toward the face immediately drive your eyes in that direction to to her eyes, which are quite sharp. Let's leave that in. This one is, is interesting. I, I can't quite tell what he's working with, but I can see that he is crystal clear and, and tack sharp. His, uh, his hands are nicely positioned in the image. I wish I could see a bit more of his eyes and face. Um, the light on the back of his, his jacket is a little over bright and competes with his face and kind of pulls my eyes away from that. So let's take that one out. This has a very nice feeling to it. It's, it could almost make you dizzy looking at it, feeling like you might have a bit of vertigo since there's nothing directly in front of us other than what's apparently way down below us. I'd like to see a little more contrast, particularly in the trees at the bottom. And I, I would darken the, the really bright cloud that's right above the, the mountain. I think that that's, that keeps pulling my eyes away from the rest of the scene. Um, let's take that out. This is quite nice. I think the the detail along the edges, particularly on the right side, add a great deal to the image. And including just the last couple of letters on what I assume is the tombstone um, makes it quite intriguing. Let's leave that one in. And this is quite a, quite a good angle for the bridge. It's, it's so common to have the bridge fade off into the distance that it's nice to see that this image is really looking at the, the two angles, the, the vertical and, and the diagonal that the bridge itself makes. Nicely done. Let's leave that in. 
I like this a lot. I would say that it's amazing if, if we had, it would be so nice to have a dog or even a person in this one. Um, the, the perspective does pull me directly back into the picture, which is, which is excellent. And all of the windows definitely make a statement. Let's leave this in. I like action shots, and this is definitely one of them. It's, it's showing um, the sparks coming off of the, I assume, iron that's, that's hot and being hammered. There's a bit that, that bothers me, and I, I don't know if it's just me, but that, that wisp of hair being as bright as it is almost looks like it's part of his face or something. Um, Still, it's, it's an intriguing image. Let's leave it in. And it looks like a crab or lobster boat. Um, having the, the three men in there and working is uh, an excellent plan. And I, I really like the fact that we don't see the entire boat. Um, this makes it much more of an image of the, the people and, and what their work is, the fact that they're seamen. Um, let's leave it in. Wow. This is certainly well done. Um, I assume that it's a an image that was created as opposed to simply taken. It, it would be so nice to have a little more room at the bottom. Um, it's almost as though she's cut off. The fact that the coffin is close to the top seems okay because the real interest is her and she's only cut off at the bottom. The lighting, the background and Leaving these lights in is good. I would be tempted to remove this light since it's too bright, to so bright that it pulls my view away from her face and it's close to her face. So let's take this one out. Another gorgeous still life. Um, I think that the objects in the field life, in the still life, were well chosen. I think the uh, the pipe um, is really needed in this image to offset the the flower, and part of that is because of the brightness of the flower, and it needs to be bright since it's close to the window. So I think this is very nicely done, and I especially like the fact that the the picture, the painting in the in the image is itself of a flower to kind of replicate what we have here. So let's leave this in. I keep thinking that I saw this in a movie somewhere. Um, I love old movies. And I think the, the expression of the woman is priceless. The, the brightness on the top left might bother some people, but it actually doesn't bother me in this image. And the reason for that is that she and her wave and her smile are so dominant that it almost needs something to balance her. And I think the composition on this is excellent. Keep it in, please. When I look at this, I wonder what he's thinking. His, his eyes almost look like he's suspicious of something. And his hair is, is wonderful how it, how it trails down over his shoulder. Uh, it, it has a, a couple of things that I would consider uh, cropping out or, or removing. This vertical line here isn't terribly prominent, but it, it's a bit bothersome. Um, 
But let's, and I also think that this white, which is probably the tip of a cane, uh, would be, it would be better if that were not part of it. But it's a very nice image of a very interesting person. So let's leave it in. And the textures and the, the rock and the perspective of this uh, just pull you straight in toward the back, uh, which is, is quite nice. I, I love the, the shadows on the ceiling as they come from the, from the columns. So I think that's upside down. <laughs> the, sh the shadows on the floor. <laughs> Are nicely My bad. done, <laughs> so, and you know this is one of those unique images that works either upside down or right side up. Nice cover. So let's leave this one in. Great angles in this architectural image. Um, I think that the the toning is well done. The the darker buildings at the bottom with all the windows really give it kind of an anchor, a, a base for the, for the bright uh, building going up. It's, it's a nicely seen set of angles and lines, but I don't think it would hold my attention for, for long periods of time. So let's take that one out. A very nice nature scene, and again we've we've retained the reflection in the water of the rock, and the the textures of the rock and the trees behind it are quite appealing. The um, I I would like to have some sort of activity or action or creature of some type. Um, the rock itself is is clearly the dominant focal point of the of the photograph, but it's as they say it's just a rock. Um, it, it would be really nice to have something going on in this image, but it's so well done. I'd like to leave it in. And a fascinating woman and what she's doing, it, it tells quite a story. I think that it's, it's well seen. I, I would love to know where that is and even who she is. I do find that, that we need some more room in the image for, for her knee, which is right against the very edge, which is a shame. The, the focal point of the image is twofold. I think that it's both her face and then her arms pointing down to the to the head of the, the hoe that she's using. It's it's an interesting image, but I think we'll take this one out. Well I remember the name of this one. Um, not not too hard to guess. The uh, the gears are are well done. The the depth of field is good. The tones um, are are excellent in how they're managed with the the various shades of darkness as we move into the image. It's it's another though that to me needs something happening or something that's going to hold my interest. Partly, I'm not quite sure where to look in this image. Um, there's a, actually, for gears, there's a lot going on, and my eyes just keep moving around trying to, trying to decide where the photographer wants me to, to rest my eyes. So let's take it out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
very nice. The lighting in this is dramatic. And I think that the position of, of the bird and the, the way it's looking really gives a nice balance since you left room in, in front of, of its beak. The uh, handling what the bird is standing on was really well done. Often, if, if this is all you see, a bird and a branch, the branch is more of a distraction and boring, but it isn't in this case. I think the lighting that you've given to it is really nicely, nicely handled. So let's keep this in. And again, the, the lighting in this is beautifully handled. It's, it's so easy to blow out the, the highlights in something like this, and yet they're, they're all there. Um, I think that assuming that you did some masking on this in order to darken the background, you did an outstanding job with all of the hair, et cetera, which isn't necessarily trivial to do. There's only one tiny thing, and it's not really bothersome, but there's a little white dot up there that I keep seeing. Um, before you hang this on, the, on your wall, and I think you should do that, I'd get rid of that dot, but let's definitely keep it in. Interesting. The, the lines in what I assume is, is a cliff or a, a rock of some type um, add a great deal of interest to this. I think that the, the lighting is a little overwhelming in terms of the brightness. I, I think that it, it should be bright on the rock, but I don't see any detail in some of the areas. I'd like to have the, the rock show some detail throughout, not be quite as bright, and have this fascinating bush be totally silhouetted like the black hole is. So let's take that one out. Symmetry is something that can be really challenging in, in photography. And the, the photographer managed this one quite nicely. The parts that matter in terms of symmetry are clearly the, the window and the roof line and the steeple, and they're all perfectly symmetric. And then you added interest by having other things that you didn't darken or blur out, um, which makes it a more intriguing photograph. Nicely done. Let's keep that in. An old-timey lock and tells, tells the story and, and has a great deal of intrigue. I like the, the shadow or darkness that's on the, uh, what appears to be wood. I think that, that gives a little, little balance to the, to the lock itself, which it needs. Um, let's keep that in. It's an interesting image. Um, it looks like a fascinating place, and the, the, I, I do have something of a problem in that I'm not sure what the photographer wanted me to focus on. I see this, this building, which looks like it could be a church of some type, and then there are the, there's the couple, and then there's the person or people with the dog. And so I keep glancing around trying to decide where to let my eyes rest. Um, it's, it's well done technically, but I think we'll take this one out. Beautifully done. The, the tones and the textures and the lines in this one are really magnificent. Um, I think that the Photographer was, was very wise in terms of the background in this. It has enough going on in this area and in the, the cap of up here that you don't really want to have anything competing with that in that dark background. So I think that was well chosen. Let's leave this in.
uh, feeling of the good old times. Um, yeah, this one has a, a nice feeling to it. Um, I, I like the concept of, of clothes hanging on a line outside and showing some of the building. It, it gives a setting that tells the story of the past. I would be interested in seeing how this might work in color if as long as the color was in the clothes, I could see it easily pulling me into the, the entire image if, if the colors went on back, as long as the buildings themselves didn't compete with the, with the colors of the, of the dresses. Um, let's take this one out. Interesting in, in the symmetry area, um, I think that the details in the, uh, the areas, I guess this is glass, um, are quite intriguing. I, I would like to be able to see the same details in the dark areas. Uh, for some reason, perhaps it's because of shadows, um, they, they aren't as visible. So I, th I think this is, is a nice image. I like the square uh, format, and I, I actually like how it's matted quite nicely with the large space at the bottom. But let's take this one out. Wonderful train. The, uh, to me, a couple of things that are especially appealing. Of course, the smoke going up from the train makes the whole thing seem alive. Uh, if without the smoke, it would be quite static. And the, the train tracks, not only do they lead you back as a leading line to the, to the locomotive, but they add interest because it's obviously uh, a, a, an area of that the, the tracks cross and you can take a, a side, side path. It would be nice to have just a little more room on the, the left side, um, but it it's doesn't kill the image. And I like being able to see just a little bit of detail in the train that's parked off to the right. Nicely done, let's keep it in. And it's the night for symmetry. And this one's quite interesting. I, I don't know if the photographer created the symmetry in Photoshop, um, which you could do, uh, or if that's actually as it was seen. But it's nicely seen and nicely handled with the lights and the darks. It appears that the whites are totally white but not blown out, and the darks go almost completely to black, which is good because it gives us a, a great tonal range for the rest of the image as well. And the floor or whatever it is that, that it appears to be riding on has a great deal of interest without pulling your attention away from the bicycle rider. Let's leave that in. This, this is nicely captured. I like having the flag visible in the image. The, the tones, the dark areas are, are handled well and, and not, blown, not uh, totally blacked out. I, I'm bothered by the super bright at the top of the, of the museum. Um, that keeps pulling my eyes away from the train, as does a little bit of the white down here. Um, let's take this one out. Very interesting. Uh, the, the angle of the bird and, and how it almost looks like it's looking at its reflection is really intriguing. I, uh, having the feather sort of offsetting its head is is very nice as a composition. I think this is, is quite well done. Let's leave it in. 
and a little infrared photography. Uh, I think the pagoda is, pagodas are just fascinating to me. Um, I lived in Japan for three years, so I'm familiar with pagodas. <laughs> but this one is, is well done. I think that it was a, a good choice to do it as an infrared. Um, it, it feels, though, that it could use a bit more post-processing. I'd like to see a little more contrast down in the bushes and the grass area. And I, I, the top of this fence, uh, I'd like to see that eliminated in the, in the image because I find that a little bit distracting. So let's take it out. It's hard to make a, an original, unique image of, of the Metro um, because it's been taken so many times. But the, the choice of doing this as a, a circular image was brilliant. I think the, the fact that it's circular within a square frame just pulls your eye directly in. It would be fascinating if there were just a bit of a headlight of a train coming that you could just barely detect. But I think that it's, it's extremely clever. Let's leave it in. Got the, um, I think that's, uh, check it out. Oh, right. Yeah, it kind of gives you a sad feeling. Um, and I think that photographs really work well when they do create an emotion. And the emotion doesn't always have to generate a big smile. And this one, this one creates emotion because you can have empathy with the, the young man as he's losing the, the game. Um, be nice to have a little more room in front on the top of his hat, but that's not a terrible distraction. Let's leave this in. The Lines, the circles in this, um, make it an, an interesting image. Uh, I, I like the fact that the photographer left in all of the, the grasses or whatever they were surrounding the hat. I think that was a good choice. I do find that it's not an image that would hold my attention for long, though. So let's take it out. Other than the wolf, I'm not certain what I'm looking at. Um, it appears to, to be a bit of a composite of some type um, with something, veil or whatever, going over the wolf. And that part looks quite nice, actually. I, I don't like this white on the left. I think that terribly competes with, with the wolf itself. Um, I keep looking at the wolf and then looking over here. And I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that that's what the photographer intended. The dark area down here, I can't tell for sure, but it looks like there's it's kind of mushed together and could use a, a little more contrast in, in those dark areas. Let's take this one out. Just yeah, a quick so, pass through. Okay. 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 Leave it in. I wanted to see how you'd handle that, Bob. <laughs> um, take it out. Out. In. Out, 
in 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 out um, in out in 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 out in in out uh, in out and in so what do we get it down to I got the Okay. Oh, those are the ones. Okay. All right. This one? This one? Eight seven. Oh, I'm sorry, fourth, third, uh, second. 
This way. Right, okay. So that's four. You van for this part. Yeah. All right. Monochrome Unlimited. Honorable mention Kate Fred Venetia. Uh, that's just a basic one-lighter with a, a grid on it, white backdrop, uh, inverse square law in effect. Nothing to it. Mm -hmm. Honorable mention, Shea for Smoke Steam. John Milliker. No, Mike Thomas. I was say, that was not. <laughs> that's the ribbon, Mike. <laughs> So I took that at Cass, West Virginia. The reason it's cropped oh. tight on the left is because there's a hundred people standing there. <laughs> I've had that problem myself many times. Windows Still Life Honorable Mention, Mike Thomas. For real. Uh, not again. Uh -oh. <laughs> I took that picture for our Still Life competition in which it didn't win, and I think the judge was very wrong. So this is the third time I've entered it. <laughs> Is this the first time you've been recognized? Yes. Well, that's, a, that's a trick to keep on if you get somebody like it. <laughs> Bashful Mule, Honorable Mention, Christine Malika. This is at a farm up in New York that we go to every year for a wet plate jamboree that I took some digital shots at. And the darkness in the background is just the shelter that he was in. So I didn't really have to do much to it. Fourth place, unlimited, uh, the return, John Milliker. We have a friend up in New York that likes that steampunk stuff. So we met her down in Scranton, and that's um, Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton. Very, very good place to go and get tetanus and hang off of trains. <laughs> Third place, down by two, Ron Pfeiffer. Uh, that we can't see. Oh, oh, okay. No, it's no, 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 that's all right. <laughs> Turn it. That was a uh, shot of uh, one of my grandson's friends in the dugout in a game that wasn't going very well this summer. <laughs> Second place, Jellyfish Fred Venetia. That was taken in my garage. That was taken with my garage with a speed light with a snoot on it with a grid on it. First place, Heron Black and White, Ron Piper. Uh, this was shot at uh, Blackwater uh, really late in the day, uh, getting some of that uh, uh, horizontal light coming in from the sunset. And um, it took a long time to kind of get the lights and the darks uh, working right on it. It was not an easy picture to do, actually. It's very nice. Thank you. Here we go. Nice. 
Congratulations to all of our winners. If you are not here tonight to win, please post your image on the Facebook group with a little bit of information about the image, where it was shot. Let me make sure I'm in the, in the, in the camera here. Bob's uh, blocking me out. I want to remind everybody this Sunday, we've got the fellowship here at 12 noon here in, in the Fellowship Hall of Severna Park Baptist Church. Uh, next Thursday, I'm going to be talking a little bit about drone photography, videography, whether or not you want to get into it professionally or just have fun. I started out hating it, so uh, you're going to have a lot of different options there. And then who is, uh, what's the week after that, Christine? Uh, digital contest, class. Digital contest, and then the 16th is the, uh, looks like a painting presenter, right? Uh, 16th is Lori Lampert, looks like a painting. Perfect, excellent. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. Thanks for joining us online. Thank you to the judge. Thank you to the contest chair. Thank you to Fred for the cookies, and we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.